Budgeting ammo is a phrase that we've been using over the last couple weeks in a series of videos on our YouTube channel where we are discussing tools and strategies for you guys so that you can hit the range and train with more purpose. That's ultimately going to make you a better protector. It's also going to be more fiscally responsible with the resource that is ammunition. And that term, when people think of budgeting ammo, they often go to the monetary aspect. But what we have presented to you over the last five episodes is a whole toolbox of different ways that you can apply different skills and strategies on the range training days so that you get more out of your shooting and you're not just plinking and wasting ammo. Well guys, today is the last episode in this series for now. And what we're gonna talk about is closing out this series and also equipping you with a little bit more in your toolbox so that as you continue forward and we continue creating content, you can use the stuff that we have presented to you and continue to train with more purpose. Let's dive into it. Over the last five episodes of Budgeting Ammo, we took you guys on a journey where we started out just kind of discussing the basic framework for Budgeting Ammo and why we're doing this series. Then we dove into the reasons why people might want to train with firearms and take shooting a bit more seriously than people that just kind of collect or plink with their firearms. Then we talked about some of the basic weapon platforms that we see used all the time and stuff that we would recommend you guys consider as you're getting into the world of defensive firearms. And then we talked with my buddy Phil about creating a realistic training plan and then building drills that help you in a realistic way. So they actually further your training and give you the skills that you need to survive a fight with a firearm. And then my good friend Paul kind of wrapped out the end of the series there with me talking about trackability and how we keep track of our progress. Because at the end of the day, if we do not track our progress, we have nothing to gauge our growth off of. And we don't know at that point if we're actually growing as shooters or if we're kind of hitting those plateaus or maybe wasting time on things that don't really matter, things that don't make sense to further our training. And right now what I wanna tell you guys is if you have not seen the other episodes on our Budgeting Ammo series, please pause this particular video and take a second to go check them out. We created a playlist on our YouTube channel. You can look for Budgeting Ammo. All of the different episodes are right there for you. So start at the beginning, get back up to here. It's gonna be definitely valuable for you guys. And one of the pushback comments that we've gotten in the past is, oh, ammunition is coming back in availability and the prices are dropping. And the one word of caution that I have for you guys is don't get complacent. Even if the ammo prices are technically getting lower, which in my opinion, it's kind of an artificial dip in the ammo prices. I believe that they're gonna go back up come fall. But even if you are in a time where ammunition is readily available and very inexpensive, it doesn't mean that we slack on our training plan. And today's episode, what we're gonna be talking about is answering the question for you guys as we close out this series, how much ammo should I have on hand and what kind of ammo consumption should I be expecting to use? And the one thing that I'm gonna tell you guys is it's not gospel. So it's gonna vary greatly depending on your budget. So how much your income levels allow you to spend is gonna dictate how much ammunition you can have on hand. And I would typically tell people that if you can have a thousand rounds, that at any given time you have a thousand rounds of ammunition set aside specifically for training, and then you have another thousand rounds sitting aside as your rainy day, your budget, your excess surplus that you would touch in the event that ammo prices rise like crazy and you still have to continue training, you have a little bit of a buffer that you're not gonna be in the same situation that most people were in as we got through spring of 2020, got into the fall and ammo became quite literally unavailable anywhere you looked. So that's just a basic level that I think that you guys could start out with. Am I saying that you need to have a thousand rounds on hand? No, if all you can afford is to go to your local store once a week, pick up a hundred rounds. One of the things that I've been doing for my personal training is focusing on 100 round range days. And in the future, that's some video series that we're gonna be putting out with rifles and pistols, showing you guys how to hit the range with 100 rounds and a purpose. And there's a lot of work that you guys can do outside of training. And so that's why I wanted to caution you. Yes, I would recommend getting a thousand rounds. I would recommend having a surplus of a thousand rounds on hand. 
I just would not recommend that you go to the range with 1,000 rounds and spend six hours there because what's gonna end up happening is typically people will, will do that and then they'll end up burning through gobs and gobs of ammo without a real plan. So if you listen to episode four and you have a solid plan, what I would recommend you guys do is take 100 to 200 rounds with nine millimeter, 100 to 200 rounds with 223, hit the range and then focus on those core drills that are gonna propel you and help grow your skills as a shooter. The reality is you don't need to take tons of ammo to the range to get that. And I'm super excited for when we start shooting these particular videos about 100 round range days because I can tell you from my own experience, taking 100 purposeful rounds and putting them into targets is going to get you a lot further than showing up with five or 600 rounds and just doing random drills without any trackability or plan. So guys, that's pretty much it at this point for this series. There's not a whole lot more that I'm gonna dive into at this moment. And I've said it in every episode, I know that it's kind of the bird's eye view of this. We're not actually getting into Excel spreadsheets and telling you guys that you need to put this amount of money aside to get this amount of ammo. The reality is, if you can afford to have tons of ammo on hand, that's great. Just don't be hoarding it. Take that ammo and put it to use. And the last word of caution that I'll say is, a lot of people get really tempted to have tons of different calibers and the justification for that is, well then I'm diverse, I have diversity and because of that I have a little bit of a cushion and while that could be true, the reality is a lot of people that are doing that and I fell into that category for years, full disclosure, is the reality is they're not out training to the level that they should anyway. So what that does is that takes your money that you only have a finite amount of, now you've spread it among six different calibers and you're not gonna be able to train to the level that you could if you had one quality fighting pistol, one quality fighting rifle. And some of you are gonna say hypocrites because we have tons of guns in the company, but on a personal level, when I go home at night, I have one rifle, one pistol. When I'm training on my own, I train with my pistol and my rifle. I try to keep my core firearms that I train with to a minimum so that I can focus my ammunition where it counts most and where it's going to return on my investment the most. I don't wanna be wasting money on the range. So guys, if this series was helpful to you, please leave a comment down below. Let us know how we can help you out in the comment section. If there's topics that you want us to cover, again, comment section is where you guys can do that. And real quick, shameless plug about our company. If you guys like what you're seeing on this, pausing. This will be a punch in moment. Another, <laughs> we're good. Focus on, focus on, focus on. And guys, one of the last ways that you can show support to us if you appreciate the channel and you like the content that we're putting out, understand that it's free to you. We're not charging you anything to view this, but it does cost us something. And one of the ways that you can support us and help us to continue being able to do this kind of content is to hop on over to tatargets.com, that's our website, and consider supporting us over there. We have some pretty sweet AR-550 target systems, paper targets, free downloadable targets, night vision for all of you that are into shooting and gooning around at night, we got you covered. Check it out, tatargets.com. When you spend some money over there, you're supporting Second Amendment absolutists who really care about you, wanna invest in you, and see our communities better armed and better prepared. Thank you guys, we'll catch you in the next one.